The recent attacks of the Ukrainian army greatly disrupted the invasion plans of the Russian troops. While the Moscow army was in the process of entering the recovery process, the Bakhmut operations carried out by the Kiev soldiers a few days ago ended this process before it even started. The latest situation in the city, where Russian leader Vladimir Putin hopes to win, is now beginning to come under the control of the Ukrainian armed forces. Warm news continued to come from all fronts of the Ukraine-Russia war today. As we mentioned in Bakhmut, with the last striking operations organized by the Ukrainian armed forces, the positions, ammunition depots, and military command centers of the Russian troops in the city were blown up one by one. Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky stated that the defense of the city of Bakhmut, which is on the front line in the Donetsk region for the time being in the ongoing war against Russia in his country, is of key importance for them. Stating that they met with the officials of the defense forces today and discussed the situation on the front lines where the conflicts continue. Zelensky stated that Russia's intense attacks on Ukraine continue. Noting that the Russian army continues to carry out violent attacks, especially to seize the city of Bakhmut in the Donetsk region. The Ukrainian leader said, The Bakhmut direction is of key importance. The city is under our control, but the invaders are doing their best to ensure that not a single wall is left intact there. Noting that they continue to fight against Russian forces at other points on the Ukrainian fronts, Zelensky said, We are gradually reducing the potential of the invaders in the Zaporizhia region, in the Kherson region, that is, in the south in general. After the missile attacks carried out by the Russian forces on energy infrastructures in Ukraine on December 16 were thwarted by the Kiev air defense, Zelensky's soldiers continued their counterattack at full speed. The Kiev army continued its offensive operations at full speed not only in Ukraine, but also in Russia, in its fight against the invading troops. Ukraine almost brought its freedom struggle to Russia. A Ukrainian attack on the front line a few days ago turned the agenda upside down. Shortly after Zelensky made his assessment of the war situation, the Ukrainian army expanded the size of its offensive operations, targeting the Russian city of Belgorod. This attack, which shocked the Moscow administration, took place at night near the center of Belgorod. The Russian army had begun to attack Russian territory. In Belgorod, first of all, the sound of a missile began to resonate last night. After this loud sound, which woke the residents of the region from their sleep, a big explosion occurred. Not long after, the second explosion echoed through the streets of Belgorod. The dark sky was illuminated by the effects of the explosions, and Belgorod was preparing for a very long night. The first images of the explosion were captured on a security camera in the city. Belgorod region officials began to take safety gear for possible other attacks after the two explosions. This attack by the Ukrainian army caused serious issues to be discussed in the Russian administration. Vladimir Putin's seat of power was endangered as a result of the attacks by Kiev soldiers in the Belgorod region. The situation in the war was now much more risky and the Ukrainian army could now easily attack Russian territory. This situation was also on the agenda of citizens living in Russia. Local people were already dissatisfied with Vladimir Putin and his administration. While riots, civil wars, and conflicts were increasing day by day in Russia, this disaster in Belgorod completely shook the faith of the Russian citizens in the Moscow administration, especially in Putin. Just as the situation in Russia was starting to spiral out of control, another striking attack in Kursk tonight was the last straw. The inhabitants of Kursk were shaken by a very powerful explosion last night. According to local residents, around 2 o'clock in the morning, a very loud explosion was recorded on the territory of Kursk, which could be heard almost throughout the city. In the first images of the incident, the intensity of the explosion was so great that the alarms of many of the parked cars began to sound. First in Belgorod, then in Kursk. The Ukrainian armed forces reached a different dimension with the offensive operations they organized in these regions during their freedom struggle. Now Russia could be easily targeted by the Kiev army. In fact, the Kiev army had repeatedly proved this idea by organizing many offensive operations in Russia. In fact, last week the Ukrainian air force attacked Russian military bases in Engels II and Diaghilevo with Soviet-era jet-powered drones. The range of these drones in the inventory of the Ukrainian army was about 1,000 kilometers. For this reason, Soviet-era unmanned aerial vehicles used by the Ukrainian army for cross-border operations were quite suitable. The Russian administration was surprised at what happened after the attacks on the airbase at Engels II, because heavy bombers belonging to the Moscow army were located at this airbase. 
As a result of this air operation of the Ukrainian army, most of these planes were damaged. Since the Soviet-era drones were kamikaze type, these vehicles caused huge fires where they exploded. In Engels too, a great fire broke out with the explosion of many Ukrainian drones. The fire, which was brought under control as a result of long efforts by the officials at the airbase, caused serious destruction. In the satellite images of the attack, it was revealed that the Russian authorities in Engels II moved the heavy bombers left from the attack to safe areas against possible air threats. This actually seemed like a simple precaution that should have happened, but there was a very deep meaning behind this verb. The authorities' hijacking of Russian heavy bombers to safe zones showed that Moscow was now seriously afraid of Ukrainian forces. The Ukrainian army, which was in a position of resistance at the beginning of the war, is now strong enough to conduct airstrikes on Russian soil. On the other hand, Russia has not yet received a response to these attacks. But Russian Defense Minister Shaigu supervised the situation of the Moscow army as a result of the successful operations carried out by the Ukrainian army across the border. In the statement shared by the Russian Ministry of Defense, it was stated that Shaigu paid a working visit to the Russian Southern Military District. The statement which was recorded that Minister Shaigu supervised the Russian troops fighting in Ukraine included the following statements. Minister Shaigu flew around the areas where the Russian soldiers are deployed, checking the positions of the units fighting on the front line in the Special Military Operations Zone. The defense minister met with the soldiers of the Moscow army on the front line and thanked the soldiers for performing their duties with high performance. Shaigu was briefed on the actions of the troops. The Minister of Defense drew attention to the organization of providing comprehensive support to the troops, the conditions of the deployment of the soldiers on the ground, the work of the medical and rear troops. These statements shared by the Russian media were repeatedly served by news agencies. Vladimir Putin, as usual, did not want to show his own army as weak. Everyone knew that the credibility of the country was diminished as a result of the Ukrainian army's attack on Russian soil, but Putin was trying to hide this fact from the Russian people. In addition, another tactic of the Russian leader was to initiate retaliatory attacks by directing the Russian armed forces after the historical achievements of the Ukrainian army. But now it seems that this strategy of Putin will not work either, because President of Ukraine Vladimir Zelensky stated that it's possible to prevent missile attacks by Russia 100% with a good air defense system, and demanded air defense systems from the Allies. Even now, it is possible for the Ukrainian army to prevent 100% of the missile attacks of the Russian troops. But the Ukrainian leader wants to increase the number of these air defense systems. In this way, the air attacks of the invaders will be completely prevented by using these systems, which are mentioned in many regions of Ukraine. We hope that Zelensky's requests on this matter will be met as soon as possible, and the Ukrainian army will completely neutralize the Russian attacks. Please do not forget to subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications in order to be informed about new videos. Thank you for watching us.